Peter uh, Sullivan is a graduate academic assistant at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. And uh, it is also, it has been also a teaching assistant in the same university. So he is also a, a relevant participant in, in the, in the Interpares Trust AI project because uh, he helped uh, all the collaborators and solving some doubts, problems, and giving support in every task that we try to do or not. So, <laughs> and uh, well, Welcome and go ahead. Thank you very much, Luis. Uh, thank you, Mohammed. So Mohammed has sort of laid the ground of AI is this broad field with so much going on right now. And one role that I have in this short talk is to prime your brains to think about how we can merge sort of theoretical archival science with this uh, broad field of AI uh, right now. So um, going back to our objectives for the InterPares project, I want to highlight that one of them is integrating the archival concepts and principles into AI. And what I'm going to do in this talk is introduce how we can use uh, diplomatic analysis as a lens to evaluate AI solutions in different contexts and how this might be a starting point for thinking about the other studies that are going to be introduced in this symposium and perhaps in the future how you think about AI tools that are being deployed at your archive or being proposed to be deployed by vendors to your archive. Um, so as a quick review, um, I am not a uh, I am not Luciana Dranti. I could never do justice to uh, explaining diplomatics, but um, I will simply say that uh, records can be broken into uh, different components. And in this talk, I'm going to use those components as a lens to consider how AI agents might interact with different components of the record. So. Um, I won't explain all of these components, but um, context, for instance, is the juridical context that um, leads to the creation of a record. So like the organizational structure of um, the, or the organization um, acts are sort of the actions involved in that record. Uh, persons can be the entities, so they could be uh, a juridical entity as well as uh, a living uh, person. Um, the procedure is uh, maybe less relevant in evaluating AI, but could provide context as to how um, records are uh, come about and are, are employed. Um, and form I want to touch base on in that it involves the many different uh, components of a record and how it's written, both um, in, intrinsic elements such as um, like the text of the document and extrinsic elements like the medium that it's been written on, whether that's a, 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 a digital file or um, parchment. Um, and then finally, the most important thing is this concept of archival bond, which uh, tells us how um, different records are related both to each other, to other records in a series, and to other records in, uh, in the phone. And so using these, I'm going to go through a couple different examples of um, AI tools being deployed to solve particular problems or contexts in an archive um, and use these different uh, components to discuss that particular tool. So for instance, in the, uh, in the creation of a record, there might be um, a, uh, a large uh, collection of 
emails that's being ingested into uh, an archive. And you may have to assign um, class codes for the indexing of these emails. So in doing this, um, there may be some things that are variable based on, um, uh, say, the context. So um, for instance, what uh, organization is creating these records may actually impact um, the classification, um, but in some cases uh, it may be different. Um, in email classification, the things we care most about are like the act, uh, the persons and procedures in order to decide um, what classification code to assign, um, but a uh, thing that might be missed in um, in like an AI approach is it may not consider elements of form in um, doing this classification. So a, a records manager, an archivist could look very quickly at the layout of a email to sort of get a sense of what, uh, what type of email it is. But for AI, oftentimes there may be some sort of tokenization or it may operate on a different level from how the archivist uh, acts on it. And so we can identify that uh, if our AI solution isn't taking into account the form, we may need to consider why or why not. Does the, um, is the solution still reliable um, if we don't take into account uh, these approaches that an archivist would use? Um, another example of, of this approach would be looking at uh, sensitivity review. So um, personally identifiable information um, may be very simple. It could be someone's social security number, uh, birth date um, on a paper, um, but it may also be connected to other records. So a single record may not have necessarily um, uh, sensitive information, but in aggregate, um, it may be it may expose that sensitive information. So in a review for PII, again, we'll have to consider the context of uh, the organization that's generating these records. We want to again consider uh, the action involved in the record, the personalities, um, and uh, the proce procedure for generating. Uh, records in a series. Um, but one thing AI solutions may be poor at um, dealing with is thinking about records in context of other records. So it may not be able to respect the archival bond when performing a, um, an analysis for PII. And there may be particular solutions that are better for this. So in standard approaches, you might use something like named entity recognition, but in order to respect the archival bond, you might want to pair that with a different model that's able to uh, pool at different levels from different documents. And one such model to do that would be something called a graph convolutional network. Um, and in thinking about how a model might uh, pool from uh, different levels or different hierarchies, you might be able to better respect the archival bond in your AI solution. Um, one aspect of records quite relevant in a Canadian context is that oftentimes there are, um, there are records in state archives that are a representative of minority groups that have uh, potentially been uh, disempowered in the past. And the appraisal value of those records may actually be quite different from, um, from other groups uh, who may have similar types of records. So a AI tool might aim to help identify uh, records that belong to particular groups 
um, as a way to uh, enhance their appraisal um, and to uh, better bring these uh, these pieces of history to um, modern life. And so when we think about AI solutions, oftentimes they don't think about the, the context that leads to um, the development of uh, the records. So, and, th and this is maybe a very hard tool. How do you incorporate like the Canadian um, record keeping apparatus into your archival solution? How do you quantify um, uh, the circumstances that led to uh, certain records being generated or um, not generated for certain groups. Um, but other, t other tools to solve this might act, again, on uh, the action and persons involved in the record. Um, and things like um, AI clustering might be good at actually um, relating uh, records to one another in this context. But again, form may be um, uh, not respected in terms of um, quickly identifying what, what particular type of record and whether or not it may have certain appraisal value. So another thing might be linking records together. So um, uh, one common thing is that people might have very different spellings of their name and um, there might be uh, assumptions that AI tools might make uh, that a name is a name. Um, and instead, you might want to approach the problem looking uh, a little bit broader. So uh, thinking about tools that do sort of fuzzy matching and stuff like that, and ensuring that you're able to uh, to match all of the potential people who might be connected with records. Um, my uh, current project I'm working on in the iTrust AI project is working to enrich um, uh, metadata for radio archives, and I'll be talking about this more later. But um, one thing that we need to think about is um, all, all of these sorts of uh, uh, circumstances. What type of uh, radio recording is it? Who is involved? Um, uh, what sort of uh, procedures are, uh, are a part of the, the record? Um, and things like form in a uh, and an audio recording might be quite different uh, from a textual document. So how do we model these things explicitly? Um, and then how do we relate to other um, recordings in the same program, for instance? So uh, one thing we realize is in order to tackle this problem, we really have to use a, a broad sense of um, uh, different diplomatic aspects to do that. A um, couple more. Yeah, yeah. Um, so for um, receiving like a disk of an, a disk image of uh, lots of different files, it's maybe perhaps a, a nightmare for some archivists just receiving boxes of stuff that they don't know uh, what's on these digital drives or CDs or, or what have you. Um, but there may be ways that you can cluster, identify the, um, the topics for particular documents on these, uh, on these hard drives and there might be a way to visualize what is there, um, but there might not be the same way to um, to identify like the the relationship between those documents necessarily. If you've just been given um, a hard drive out of the blue and you don't know what the 
uh, why stuff's on it or uh, what led to it being stored in a particular uh, file structure. So there may be things that AI can do well, but it may be hard actually to uh, restore that relationship in uh, other cases. And my final example is thinking about how we might think of AI, um, specifically like an AI experiment, and how we might preserve that in the future. So do we need to know the organizational context of the, uh, the company training these models? Um, what was the uh, action of a particular uh, training? Uh, who did the training? Um, what are the different sorts of generated files that were created through that process? Um, what does form look like for an AI training? Are these log files? Are they the, um, the sorts of uh, uh, code that gets split out um, during the process? Um, and then how do these different generated files that are sort of byproducts of the training thing relate to each other? So these are ways we can think about approaching that problem of um, thinking about preserving uh, AI um, experiments themselves. So my takeaways to you would be to think about what is and isn't relevant uh, to a particular task um, and think about what gaps might exist in um, approaching these uh, archival tasks using AI. And thank you very much.